welcome to this Invented Tips and Tricks video. Now, if you're the kind of guy or girl who's ever modeled a spring or seen a spring in a 3D application and thought, hmm, I wonder if that spring moves, god dash darn it, it doesn't, well then this is the video for you. This will show you how to model a spring and make it move, compress, as it should do in real life, because it isn't as easy as you would think so because it's, it requires a little bit of trickery. Basically, the reason why springs don't kind of move and compress by default is that when you model a spring, you give it a height. If part of the modeling process is to say spring is X value in height, and that height is fixed. It's a fixed parameter, so anything that goes on in the assembly that the spring is in can't impact that height because it's a fixed value. So we need to be able to do some tomfoolery, and a bit of voodoo, a bit of trickery to make it move. And this is how we do it. So what I've got here is a shock absorber. It's a very simple assembly with a you know a little strut that goes up and down and obviously I'm going to model a spring that goes in between here and here and we want that spring to compress based on wherever the strut is so it simulates sort of suspension I think if you know what I mean. I'm sure you do. Okay how do we start? First things first I'm going to create a new part. The new part is going to be called the spring and then okay I've already got a spring file called spring so I'll call it coil how about that okay next thing I need to do is because this coil is going to be it's it, the way it moves the way it's told to adapt and to move is because it's linked to the components around it so we need to start building in this adaptivity so that the spring in the, or the coil can move so my spring is going to be between this component here and this component here. So to start with, I'm going to use copy object to bring through these two parts as associative surfaces or composites, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and that, bring, that brings those two through and you can see them as orange bodies now. So that gives me something to work with. The next thing I need to do is to create some work geometry that I'll just need a little bit later on and hopefully once I get through it, you'll see why. So I'm gonna create a work axis and that's going to represent the center of the spring. I then need to create some work points. Now the work point is going to, it's essentially going to dis define the start and the end point of the coil. Well, not the not where the, the coil profile is, but the overall extent of the height of the coil. So I'm going to create a work point that intersects between this axis and this face. So if we just look side on, that work point is in line with this face here. And this face here is where this, the coil profile is going to start. And then secondly, the next work point is going to be in the same place, but on the top component, around about there. All right then. Next, I need to create the sketch profile for the coil. Now, I haven't got anything to sketch on, so I need to create a work plane. And let's just say it's going to be maybe hinged around that axis. Um, maybe, yeah, yeah, that'll do. That's fine. So the work plane sort of running through the middle like that. So I can create a sketch on here. And I'm going to draw the profile for the coil around here. That'll do. And the size is going to be, the size is going to be 1.5. This is an Autodesk sample file. And I've no idea what units this has been done in because that's 1.5 mil and that's goddamn tiny. I have no idea what vehicle this suspension shock absorber was designed for but it's goddamn tiny. But that's not the point, we don't care about that. So I need this I need this profile to be kind of in here. So I need to create a couple of constraints, maybe a tangent constraint between there and there and between there and there. It's not gonna pick it up so let's project that and then create that tangent constraint there. That's fine, that'll do. So that's the start point for the coil or the profile for the coil. All right, uh, jump back into that sketch. The next thing I need to do is to create a dimension which represents the height of the coil. Now, to do this, I'm gonna project the, I need to project the geometry for that point and this point here, which I'm gonna to have to use select other because it's behind a whole load of other gumph and then create a dimension between, it's still not gonna let me select it, is it? There it is, that one there and that there. Okay, so this dimension, this will be the height of the spring. But when I select the left mouse button, it's going to say it's going to be put down as a driven dimension, which is right. It is a driven dimension because we are referencing two points 
that this sketch doesn't control. These two points are based on the, loca well, the, the location of these two points is essentially driven by that component here and this component here. The, my sketch can't control those parts. Those parts control this dimension. And that's the whole point. That will be the coil height. So wherever these two components are will control that value which controls the coil height. And it all comes together. So if, and if you want to be anal about it, this is the driven dimension here and we can name this, you know, spring height. Oh, wait. Okay, I'm going to finish that sketch. Next thing I want to do is start the coil command. It automatically picks up the profile because it's the only one in the sketch. I'm going to pick the axis. GG goes the wrong way around, so we can flip that. And then for the coil size, now you need to pick either revolution or pitch and height. So I'm going to say revolution. So I'm going to say five revolutions and the height. And again, just to reiterate, this is why in normal circumstances, coils can't change in height because the height is a fixed value. Assemblies can't control that number because it's fixed. So we're going to say, well, I'm not going to explicitly de define the height. The height is going to be that there. Now, the next thing I also need to do is the, the height is terminating up here. And that's because it's 32.427 from here to here. But for my coil, 32.47 is being calculated from here. That's why it goes a little bit too high. So I need to say for the height is spring height minus 1.5, which is the diameter of the profile. Oosh, look at that. Look at that. It's looking delicious. Right, I can now turn off my work plane. I don't need this anymore. Um, I can hide the surfaces. I can hide my work axes and points. Don't need them anymore. And just for shits and gigs, we can change the color of the spring to be a little bit glossy. Okay, there it is. There she blows in all her glory. So we've got a spring in between the two components and let's just see if everything goes to plan. What I should be able to do is pull this strut down and the coil should move to suit. Oh, it does. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Now, if you want to be a bit more clever with this, if you want it to look a little bit more realistic, what you can also do, um, and you do have to be, you sometimes have to be a bit careful which where you place the constraint. Just to, you need to make sure that the angles are all right and that. But this should be fine. We can create a constraint between this face and this face here, and let's put in a value of thirty and apply that. Right now, that constraint is in here it's just minimize this it's this mate here so we can say this can be you know spring and if we drive this compo if we drive this constraint this will simulate the the shock absorber moving so we're going to drive it from say 30 to 40 mil you need to make sure you select drive adaptivity and what you should see is the spring compressing and you can also do repetition so let's just say 10 repetitions and then that simulates the coil moving and that's how you do it so the key to it is to make sure when you're defining the height of the coil you're linking the height of the coil to the two components that are going to be driving the height of the coil which is essentially this one here and then this one here wherever these two are the distance between them that driven dimension controls the height of the coil and there you have it and that's how you do it okay that's it in a nutshell. Hopefully that was useful. If it was, please press like or please press dislike if you didn't like it. Or leave a comment if you've got a bit more to say about it. Uh, if you've got any more requests. Like I said, this was, a subs this was a request from one of my subscribers. Asked how to do this, so here you go. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Uh, so you get notifications on future videos. And you can make requests on future videos as well. So guys, thank you very much. And until next time, see ya.